what's going to happen now, and those of you who were here yesterday will know about it. Uh, my goal is to get Heather to walk on a plastic tarpaulin. Now, you and I and everybody else knows that's a distinct impossibility at this point in time. And if she does go on that tarpaulin, she's going to hear her feet on that thing, and then she's going to jump in the air and kick and strike out, dive at it, get aggressive. You know that. Well, I know one thing, Heather. I'm going to be safe if I go get in the lake. Because you're not going to come in here with me. But over here is a stream, a little stream. They've got it almost all covered up, but we've got enough wind today that it worries me. We don't want it to fluff up as she tries it. But let's see if Heather will just walk over this stream. Incremental training is absolutely essential. You saw how she wants to strike to death any little piece of plastic. And that's okay. Let her go through that. It's good exercise for her. But I want her to become accepting of that plastic and she can just step over this tiny little stream here. That's no problem. But it rained last night. So it's double the width now. <laughs> Heather. She still stepped over it, but it rained again last night. And we'll just keep increasing the challenge here. You want to come in, Gabriel, and, and you can you can do that while Tommy takes the the stick. Yeah, this is Yeah, that'll be okay. She'll still jump over that, I think. Oh, she touched it with her foot. It rained again last night. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Miss Heather, what do you think? Miss Heather. Come on, sweetheart. Can you walk over that now? You're going to jump right in the middle of me, aren't you? No, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. You just give her a rub like that. Now, the most important thing that I'm doing is walking away. After I give her the rub, that's reward. But the biggest reward is walking away. Why? Because no predator acting predatorial ever goes in, touches the horse, relaxes, and walks away. They can't do it. So the computer of the horse says, that's not a predator. Or at least, if he's a predator, he's not acting in a predatorial fashion. Good girl. Rained again last night. Now we're getting out there. And we'll start to increase her, we'll raise the bar and start to increase her workload to the extent that I'll try to come across the corner after she goes over it and we'll see if we can get a little bit of lake water on her tootsies. Yeah, we'll see if we can get her feet wet in the lake a little bit. I'm gonna be right there, Gabrielle, so yeah. Okay, come on, sweetheart. Now we're, we're letting her walk on it we're not making her walk on it, but she's beginning to beat her demons. I'm going to make one more trip across that. She's beginning to beat her demons, and it's amazing how they will get happy like a child when they first swim across the pool. It's amazing how happy they get when they learn that they can do this terrible thing. Now, here I go. I'm going to make an immediate left here and just say, please come across the corner of this lake. That girl. All right. Once more, we're going to try this corner. You 
did it. You did it. The stream's gone. You can give her a hand. So I can't really hear what you're saying for Heather. Well done. Give her a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Well, well done, Heather. So, Mary, are you surprised and proud of Heather now? Very surprised. Very now, to see her do it. I've got, never do that. I've got more surprises for you, Mary. She's a wonderful girl. I wonder if I can get her to just walk across the middle of the lake here, just following me, no stream or anything. I, I'm not going to pull her. I'm not going to force her. I'm just going to let her walk with me. And we'll try it in both directions here. Sound man, be careful. And Heather is a perfect example of how you can bring a frightened, possibly abused horse, originally, into cooperation and complete compliance with what you want for her. Sure, there's things to do with her. There's a lot of work to do. And if I came out with the plastic bags flying and came at her throat here with them, she would still fight. But in two or three days time, I could have Heather accepting not only the plastic tarpaulin, but tomorrow we'll work with the bucking, the refusing to jump, and those things that have beset her. And what do you do with a horse that refuses to jump? Why just give them a good smack? Yeah. Sting them with a whip. And then you'll find out how they want to fight. The best horses will do so when they're doing their job because they want to, not because they're forced to. You have the opportunity now, with all of the educational opportunities that are available to you, you have opportunities that no other generation ever had. If you go to my website, if you go to Caroline here, if you go to my instructors, you're going to see that you can achieve these same things with your horses that I'm achieving with mine. I have nine world champions in the show rings of the world and more than 500 international stakes winners in racing. So we're not talking about some namby-pamby I was the world's champion bulldogger in rodeo and world's champion team roper in rodeo. We're not talking about some, you know, do-gooder. We're talking about someone who has studied psychology and has two doctorates in behavioral sciences. We're talking about somebody that can be tough. I played American football on a national championship team. So I know what violence is all about, and I'm here to tell you that get it out of your life and you'll be better off. The world has never needed that message more than it needs it right now. Hang on for just a moment here and we'll get Heather outside the 